Hey there, Marcus Hutzel here, and this is part two in uh, an unscripted series of uh, gain staging and noise and how gain staging will definitely affect your noise downstream. If you haven't watched part one, I'll link it above, definitely down below, but it's the lecture portion of these two videos. It got a little long, so this one, so I just wanted to break it up and post two videos, but this one includes all the demonstrations and listening to and showing you sound examples. Showing you sound examples? Sure, showing you sound examples. My camera turned off. Anyway, this is the demonstration portion. I had a lot of fun doing it. So I'm going to demonstrate this and I'll do this both ways. First, I'll set the volume level of my system the incorrect way with my amplifier and speakers turned all the way up or at some arbitrary and probably high level. And then I'll work my way backwards through the system and I'll record that on my Zoom F8N and we'll listen to the results. Then I'll reset and do it the proper way, working forward through the system. And I'll let you hear the results of that as well. So let me walk you through my setup really quickly here. I've got a small Behringer Xenix 1002 analog mixer right here. I've got a short SM58 running in input one. Over here on my left, I have a powered speaker. It's a studio monitor, but it's a speaker with an amplifier built in. So this can take the place of something like a QSC K8 or K12 or any of the hundreds of models of live speakers that you'll see out there in the live audio production world. This is just what I have at home, so it's what we're using because it does the job as we need to do it. I have my Zoom F8N over here and I'll tell you what's plugged into that in a sec. So out of the mixer, I've got the left output going over to the speaker. The right output of the mixer is going over to input two of my Zoom F8N recorder. That's being fed via USB over into Adobe Audition so I can just record directly on Audition. So in reality, since I'm using the left and right main outs, both of these outputs should receive the exact same signal coming from whatever we do here on the console. So we'll get a duplicate signal at the speaker and over at the Zoom F8N. Now input one on the Zoom F8N is actually this Shure PG81 condenser microphone that's about half an inch from the tweeter of our speaker because what that will allow us to do is a little bit later in the edit, I'll be able to let you hear the noise coming out of the speaker instead of trying to hear the noise through the microphone that I'm speaking into, which is my Rode VideoMic NTG. We don't really want to listen to that, so I'll queue up, hopefully later, a solo of just that microphone as it hears the noise coming out of the speaker. But really the way I'm going to probably do this and let you hear the difference in noise is I'm going to use the recording uh, from input two of the Zoom because that's going to be a very clean input into the recorder without a lot of ambient noise. So let's get into this. All right, so I'm going to set this up the improper way first. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna start at our speaker and I'm gonna turn that basically all the way up assuming maybe you've got uh, amplifiers and passive speakers and you can't get to the amplifiers during the show. And that's a, a common scenario. The amps are far away. You can't turn them up or down during the show. But again, that's part of something you should do pre-show to set your overall gain structure. But we're going to start with the speaker just completely turned all the way up. So right now there's nothing feeding to the speaker at all. It's just the speaker's on, it's up, and now we'll continue working our way backwards through the system. Set our... Uh, output fader on channel one to Unity, and then we'll set our console output to Unity. And I'm gonna let you hear this. I'm gonna boost this a little in the edit coming from the microphone that's next to the tweeter. So I'll, I'll boost it for effect, but I can automatically hear noise coming out of my speaker already without pushing any signal through my console. So the fader's down on the console. And now we'll listen to that. And as you listen, I'll push the fader up. That's just console noise. Now it's not a lot, but since the amplifier is turned all the way up, it's amplifying any little thing it gets, which is just a little bit of noise coming from this console. So I'm already getting noise out of the PA because the amplifier is up all the way and I haven't even plugged in any inputs yet. All right, so we'll get started. I've got a Shure SM58 running into input one of my little Behringer console. Why? Because I wanted to use a dynamic mic since it needs a lot of gain and the SM58 needs quite a bit. 
Um, so it'll be a very good test. So over here on the Zoom F8n, I'm sending over to a record deck. This could be anything you need to send signal to. And right now, since I've got the right output of the console going over to input two, assuming, like I've said in this video, you, our, our goal is to try to gain these up to line level to push out of our console, I've got input two set to line level. And we can see that right here on the screen of the F8n, it's set to line. So we're gonna leave it right there and I've got zero gain. It's set to line level, it's expecting line level. So we're gonna see what it is we can or cannot send it by gain structuring backwards. And instead of recording directly on the Zoom F8n, I'm using it as a USB audio interface to get into Adobe Audition just to make this whole record and edit a little bit easier. Oh, and I've got the dB meter here. I've had it here the whole uh, video thus far. I haven't been using it, but it's hopefully to help us get uh, just a basic idea of our dB level as we amplify out of the speaker so we can kind of have uh, apples to apples comparison when I do the first gain structure versus the second gain structure. So uh, we'll start what like most people do and we'll set our uh, output fader on channel one to Unity and then we'll set our console output to Unity and now we'll start gaining. And you can hear it's already pushing signal out and I've got the gain all the way down the preamp I can't turn the preamp off on this console and this console doesn't have mutes. So it's pushing whatever level this, this speaker, since it's turned all the way up, is already amplifying the very little bit of signal that we're getting out of there. So if I start gaining the mic and we use our ears and we use the dB meter here as our test, check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gain this microphone up to a good level for this PA that I have set up. This PA representing a very small version of something you'd see, I don't know, in like a hotel uh, small meeting room or some small room in a venue where you've got a powered speaker and you need to amplify a microphone or microphones. So we're gonna be somewhere between 70 and 75 dB um, SPL. Here's what I'm kind of going for. So I'm just gonna talk that that's a good level for this setup, if I were to be amplifying this microphone in this space, this is probably where I'd want to be. And now we've, we've, we've quote unquote done our job. We've amplified this microphone for our system, but now we need to check the rest of the system. So over here on the Zoom F8n, you can see input two. Input two is getting the right output of this console, which is an exact duplicate of the left output of this console. And there on the Zoom F8n, we can see uh, basically I've gained up the PG81 to a decent level here on the Zoom just so we can hear that microphone later. So here on the recorder, remember I've got input two set to line because in theory, if one were gain structuring properly, this console would send out line level, hopefully over to the rest of the devices. But you can see here that I'm barely getting any signal on input two on the recorder and the gain on input two is actually at zero. So I've set it to line, expect line level at the recorder, be it a camera, be it an actual record deck that you need to record this show, something like an Aja Key Pro or a, a Blackmagic uh, video recorder or hey, an audio recorder. This is just something that I've actually taken on show site and recorded with. Basically now, if I were the recording operator over here at this device, I'm going to gain up this input to where I actually have a strong enough input uh, on the recorder so I can actually record something at a decent level. So we'll gain this up. You can see I'm at plus, uh, check, 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 one, two, plus 23. Hey, 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 two, hey, two. So we'll leave that at plus 23. Basically, I'm trying to match it to the microphone. So we have even levels coming out of the speaker going into this microphone and uh, an equivalent level going into the recorder and check, check, check. What I'm looking for is kind of overall RMS and peak values. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, two, two, two. So that looks pretty even to me. So I had to gain up the line level input on the Zoom F8n by plus 23 dB. So I had to use the preamp on this recorder. I had to use the gain on this recorder to gain up the level coming out of this console because the level coming out of this console is very low. Why? Well, <laughs> because, this, because this is the wrong way to do things. Now, one could argue, why don't I just put the Zoom F8n's input on mic level so it expect mic level. And yes, I can do that. 
and therefore we wouldn't have to uh, we wouldn't have to use as much quote unquote gain. But I've done those tests with this recorder on mic and line, and there's no noise benefits. This is a very clean recorder on the inputs. So basically the difference between mic and line as far as this recorder and the noise from this recorder is concerned is a wash. Doesn't matter if we're on mic or line gaining up in either of those scenarios on the recorder itself results in the same amount of noise. And gaining low like this presents another problem. Uh, many of my other videos, uh, I talk about the importance of seeing your audio with your audio meters. And since I've gained this way, if you look at my console here, as I talk into this SM58, I've got no metering. There's no metering that's showing up, showing me the level of what I've gained this microphone up to. Now there are meters on this console, but nothing's showing up. Why? Because I didn't set the gain for the microphone first. I have no idea what level, and actually I do have an idea of what level it is. It's below negative 20 dBU. So if I hit this microphone hard, you'll actually see the level come in. Hey, two. So what that means is, even though I'm hitting it pretty hard, pretty hard, pretty hard, and I'm probably clipping out the recording, pretty hard, pretty hard, check, 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 one, two. It means that I haven't gained up this microphone enough because I can't even see the level. It's not above negative 20 dBU, so I'm nowhere near that zero dBU mark. So this is, in my opinion, not very good. You can't walk over to this console and see that I have anything coming from this microphone. Yes, we can hear it, but we need to see it as well. Um, and we can't see it because we haven't gained up enough. So to recap, we turned our amplifier all the way up. We put our fader on input one at unity. We put our output fader at unity, and then we gained from there. And we sent that level over to the recorder on input two, and then we had to gain up the recorder uh, input two's level to get a good recording level going in for this test. All right, so we're gonna record a quick portion of this in Adobe Audition. You can see I've got two inputs here, uh, the microphone, which is input one of the Zoom F8N, and input two, which is the direct from the console into input two of the F8N. I'll hit record here in Adobe Audition, and we'll actually record some of this of just me talking on the uh, SM58 microphone as it goes through the console into the Zoom F8N. But of course, we're still capturing the acoustic noise of this microphone even if I'm quiet. So now what we need to do is I need to let you hear the system noise without hearing the ambient noise from this microphone. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this 150 ohm resistor. There's a resistor in here that will kind of uh, simulate the load of a microphone without it capturing the ambient noise. So unplugging the microphone from input one and plugging this in will take out the acoustic noise that we're hearing from this SM58 and allow us to then only hear the system noise. So stand by. And now that we've swapped out the microphone for that resistor, we're still recording in Adobe Audition. So now what we're recording is just the noise in the system that we've set up with what I call an improper gain structure. And we'll just let that record for a sec. And let's take a look at the results here in Adobe Audition. All right, so if we take a look here in Adobe Audition, right here is where I unplug the microphone and plugged in the dummy plug. And so I'm gonna take a portion of this silent section, I'm gonna cut it out, and I'll bring it down here and I'll create uh, its own unique copy. And by creating a unique copy, I can then double click on the file and then the only thing contained in this file is just the silent portion, just the system noise. So if we highlight all of that and hit scan selection, we can see that our overall RMS amplitude is negative 81.16 dB. So we will use that negative 81.16 dB noise and compare that to the noise after we regain. All right, so let's do this the proper way. I'm going to turn down the speaker turn down my faders, remove my dummy plugs there for a second. And now we're going to gain structure this uh, from the microphone forward through the system and we'll see the results there. So I'll plug my microphone back in input one. We've turned our speaker down. We've turned everything down. We've turned our gain pots down. Now this console doesn't have any pre-fader metering, which, you know, we don't necessarily need it in this scenario, but if we did need to see our level, since we do have our destinations off right now, we can go ahead and push these up to Unity and then gain 
appropriately for the microphone. So there we can see uh, I'm getting good, uh, good level on the meters. However, you don't necessarily need to do that. Let's say you're already running the live show and you, you can't necessarily turn it up and, and see the after fader metering. That's fine. We have a clip light right there on every uh, channel and I'm going to use that to basically set my gain. So I will check, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'll turn it up to clip. Hey, hey, there we are, we're clipping. But I'm getting pretty loud. I have to get pretty loud, pretty loud, pretty loud, pretty loud, pretty loud, pretty loud, just to get, hey, that light to clip. And I'm for this show, for this setup, I'm never gonna get that loud. So I will leave a bit of a headroom, but you can see I'm up to about 75% of that preamp, whereas before we were down around 30%. So I'm using the preamp to its maximum without clipping. Now we can turn our fader on the channel up to Unity, and now we can turn our output fader up, and we can actually now see that we're getting metering on the console because I've gained this up enough to where I'm actually getting line level going through the console, at least on this input right now, because as I talk, you can see that I'm hitting zero dBU on the meter. So we actually have proper metering now because I've started with the preamp instead of starting with the speaker. So now that I know that I've gained this microphone up enough for the console, now let's go to our speaker and turn it up to basically get the same check, 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 one, two, one, two, roughly the same dbspl level here in my little space check one two 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 and i can't even hear any noise coming out of that speaker at this point as i turn up and down there's a little bit but i venture to say you're going to have a hard time hearing it on this video edit but let's take a look at our recording now as you can see i'm actually peeking out because i've gained structured the preamp first and got it up to line level Line levels then going through the console down to the fader for that channel. And I've got the channel fader at Unity, which means it's not boosting or cutting the level coming in from the preamp. That level is then sent over to the main fader, and I've got that at Unity. So, so what we see on the meters is actually what we're sending out. Let me give myself a little more gain. So now, going out of the left output is the level we see here in the meters, which is close to 0 dBU. And we're getting the same thing out of the right output. If we look over here at our recorder, I'm clipping out completely input two, and I haven't made any changes. If you see the input level here on input two, I'm still at that plus 23 that we were at earlier when we had low gain on the console. So great, we're clipping out the recorder, no problem. Let's just back it down to get a good level on our record deck. So we're gonna basically turn the gain down or set our level here on our record deck to match what we were doing before and check one, two. So now I only have to have my input gain on my recorder at plus four versus plus 23. Why? Because we're now sending a much hotter signal out of our console. So we've not only reduced the ambient noise coming out of the speaker, here in a sec, I'll show you that we've reduced the system noise getting recorded or getting sent out of that as well, because again, these are, these are the same output. And we've now gained up our microphone enough to get over the noise floor of the console itself. So therefore, the console sends out a hotter level of whatever's going through it. But the noise floor of the console doesn't change. The noise floor just kind of sits down here. Yes, you'll get a little bit of noise as you add successive things on the console. Like you'll get a little noise from the preamp, you get a little noise from the output fader, but you're not going to get so much that it's going to encroach on your signal if you apply your input gains properly. And now that we've gained properly, we'll go into Adobe Audition. We'll hit record. Again, we're recording the microphone on input one of the F8N. And that level hasn't changed because we're still sending out the same SPL level out of our speaker into that microphone. But we were able to take our input gain on input two down to only plus three there. It's still on line level. You know, only had to go down to plus three. So here's a quick recording of that. But of course, I need to now let you hear just the system noise without the ambient noise of this microphone. So we'll swap over and put the uh, resistor on this setup and record the silence of the system noise into Adobe Audition, so stand by. And now we'll record about 10 seconds of silence so we can measure this in Audition as well. All right, so this file here that I've highlighted uh, is now the recording after we gave our inputs proper strong input gain and regain structured everything 
to get over our noise floor. So I'll do the same thing. Right here is where I unplug the mic and plug it in the resistor. So we'll cut a silent portion out of that. We'll drag this portion down. We will create its own copy so that now also when we double click, we're looking at just that uh, silent portion. So we'll highlight everything and scan that selection. Now we have a noise floor of negative 94.86. Our noise floor has dropped by the quick math. That's about 15 dB. Uh, let's go back to the other file, which is over here. Again, this is this file is the noise floor when we gained our microphones last and sent a very low signal through our system. And if we scan that, negative 81.16. It was at negative 81.16 when we had bad gain structure. And now our noise floor has dropped to negative 90. 94.86. So what's 94.86 minus 81.16? That's a 13.7 dB drop in noise just from gain structuring our inputs first and sending a hot level through our console and out of our console over to our Zoom F8 and recorder. And again, this is the same level going to the speaker as well. So we do get less noise of the speaker as well. So just by doing that one thing, by properly gaining our inputs first and sending hot levels through our system, I've reduced my noise by almost 14 dB. And to me, that's important. And here for me is kind of the fact of the podcast or the YouTube video. So yes, we've reduced our noise floor by about 13 to 15 dB but it's still pretty low. It's still negative 86, negative 94, whatever. It's still pretty low. Is that something we're gonna hear? And that really depends on a few things. Number one, what is your end destination? I've been using this recorder the whole time, which has very quiet preamps. This recorder costs a thousand dollars. And here's where you might try to argue with me and say, yeah, but you had to increase the preamp on your Zoom F8 to end. So that's where your noise is coming from. And you're halfway right. So yes, increasing uh, the input gain on most any device is going to add its own system noise, but I did these tests without anything in the Zoom. I put these uh, resistors, these 150 ohm resistors in the Zoom itself and I tested its own noise floor and its own noise floor was about 12 to 14 dB lower than the tests I just gave you, the lower than that 96. It was like negative 108, negative 109. So simply by using this recorder, we added about 12 dB of noise, but then we're adding more noise with the console and we're adding successive noise if we gain structure improperly. So you're halfway right. You'll almost always add noise with another destination, a speaker, a recorder, whatever. But again, you can limit that noise downstream if you gain structure properly upstream. And you may not always have an end destination that has nice quiet preamps. You might have something like, I don't know, an old Tascam DR40. This thing has pretty noisy preamps. So if you have to use this and have a low level coming from your console and you have to use the preamps here to gain up, this recording is gonna be noisier than the one with the Zoom F8n. If you have something like an input on a camcorder like a Panasonic CX350 or any of those kind of small format camcorders you'd see on small live streams, those don't have very good preamps. You're gonna have to use the preamp there. That's gonna add more noise. So the noise potential really depends on what you're sending over to. We get noise out of our speakers as well in our room. And I don't really wanna walk into a room and hear a, a hissy, audio system. And remember, we're only sending a single microphone through this small console right now. The more microphones you add and the more faders and knobs that you turn up on your console, the more noise it's going to feed out. So the more noise you add at your console and send out a low level, the more noise is going to get amplified by the next piece of equipment. And the whole point of this is that the audio doesn't live in the console. It has to exit the console to do other things, to go to monitors, speakers, record decks, cameras, all of that stuff. But I can let you hear this. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two files, bad gain structure noise floor and good gain structure noise floor, and I'm going to amplify them for you and play them back to back. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so here are our two files in Adobe Audition. The yellow one here is the uh, system noise with the low gain structure on the console, um, which had the uh, higher or louder noise floor. And the purple one here 
is where we regain structure of the console and had strong input gains and send a stronger line level out of the console over to the recorder. Now you can't really see anything. And if I play these, we really can't see much on the meters as well. Watch the meters over to the right. Really can't see anything, can't see anything. But let's say we needed to boost this in post. Now what I'm going to do for effect here is I'm gonna add 50 dB of gain to each file. So if I do that here, we're adding an even amount of gain to each file. So everything is going to be even. Now you can actually visually see the noise floor here in the yellow file. You can't really even see much of anything in the blue file because the noise floor is lower. Now, are you really going to add 50 dB of gain in post? Let me tell you this. I've had to add at least 30 to 40 dB of gain to various sources that I've gotten recordings from, from other people. And that's where these noise floors can definitely start affecting your audio edits. So I'm gonna play these back to back. First, you'll hear the yellow file, which is the noise floor with 50 dB added of the bad gain structure on the audio console going to our record deck. Here we go. And here's the noise floor of the better gain structure going to the console. And we'll play those again. This time I won't talk in between. Bad gain structure first, good gain structure last. Again. And that is for me, the proof in the pudding. Are we going to be amplifying that much in post? I've had to before, maybe not 50, but definitely 30. And again, the more things you add on the console in an improper gain structure scenario, the more noise you end up at the end. And I'm gonna play those one more time for you. Here we go. Look at those meters drop. Look at those meters over there on the far right of Adobe Audition. We've got like negative 22 down to negative 34. So there's our 12 to 14 dB, 12 to 15 dB of noise floor reduction by just gain structuring our console the right way, gain structuring our inputs nice and hot to get over that noise floor as it travels through our system. And here's a quick practical example of these differences instead of just listening to system noise. And I recommend that you wear headphones for this as you probably won't be able to hear these differences much on laptop or smartphone speakers. So just as I did before, I'll start by setting my gain based on the volume output of my speaker over here, but then I'll turn off the speaker. So check, 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 one, two. I've kind of already done this a little bit uh, pre uh, setup. So we've got our speaker. I'll now turn off the speaker for this portion so we can just hear my voice in the recording and not my voice plus the additional audio of my voice coming out of the speaker and back into the mic. So as I record in this microphone through the Behringer console and into the Zoom F8N audio recorder and into Adobe Audition, you can see here in Adobe Audition that the level is a bit lower than we ultimately need for the final audio or video edit. And that's okay, it's not too low, just a bit low but that means I'll have to boost probably both of these examples in post just a bit to get them up to a comparable level to the rest of the audio in this video. But these are the levels that we already set for our previous test, so we'll use the same settings for now. And actually at the moment you're hearing my Rode video mic and TG, I'm just gonna go ahead and speak into this and I'll switch to this microphone in a minute, I'll put that on screen. But for the first example that I'll let you hear is with the low input gain as we've set it. Input two on the F8N on line level with plus 23 increase in the gain on input two. And then the second example is with stronger input gain on the preamp on the Behringer console. And then we were of course able to lower our input gain on the zoom recorder back down to only plus three on input two, still set to line. So in these two examples with your headphones on, listen for the noise floor or hiss that may or may not be present and let me know what you hear. So real quick to get these next examples up to the same level as the rest of this video, I am gonna to have to boost these in Adobe Audition. So I'm gonna do that now. This first one here is the um, improper gain structure, the low gain on the, the Behringer, and we'll just increase that to a level that's comparable for this video edit. And then this section down here is where we regained and set our line level input back down to plus three on the zoom, but I'll need to gain that up a little bit in post as well. So we'll do that here. 
Now we can listen to the examples. All right, so I'll say this next portion twice and then I'll play it back twice and I'll note on screen which gain structure we're using. Here we go. Hi, my name is Marcus Hutzel and we are testing and listening to our noise floor with two different gain structures. The first gain structure is where we set our speakers and outputs first, then went back to the mic preamp and tried to gain our inputs on our audio console according to the volume levels of our amplified speaker. And that's what we're recording with this external audio recorder. Then we reset and gain our inputs first, following proper gain structure from the beginning of our system through to the end, then pushed our signal to our outputs, then turned up our speaker or amplifier, and I'm recording that as well. And we can now listen to the differences in the resultant noise floor in both of these examples. Hi, my name is Marcus Hutzel, and we're testing and listening to our noise floor with two different gain structures. The first gain structure is where we set our speakers and outputs first, then went back to the mic preamp and tried to gain our inputs on our audio console according to volume levels for our amplified speaker. And that's what we're recording with this external audio recorder as well. Then we reset and gained our inputs first, following proper gain structure from the beginning of our system through to the end, then pushed our signal to our outputs, then turned up our speaker or amplifier, and I'm recording that output as well. And we can now listen to the differences in the resultant noise floor in both of these examples. So hopefully you could hear the difference. I think it's very apparent that there's a noticeable and audible noise or hiss behind my vocal in the first example with low gain on the mic preamp. To me, I can hear it very well and it's very present and could get worse if you start adding more uh, improperly gained inputs on an audio console. And if you have a more powerful speaker or amplifier and you set your gain structure based on the speaker or output volume, then your input gains may end up even lower on your console than I've set up for this test in my office. And that means even more need for boosting at the end. And this noise floor will get even more amplified if you need to add compression to this audio file to prepare it for either a YouTube video or of course any other audio or video recording deliverable. So if you gain structure improperly and low at the beginning, it's not only incorrect audio basics, but you'll end up with more noise in your end product. I really hope you've watched this entire video. I had a lot of fun making it. I like doing this stuff. I like testing. I like seeing the results of those tests. And hopefully this has helped you learn something. Please leave me some feedback down below. Let me know if you've learned something. Show me some of your own tests. I'd love to see them. Um, yeah, I hope to make a shorter version of this at some point. This is definitely the long version. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any comments, feedback. Uh, criticisms. I'll take them as well and um, look forward to seeing you. I, I can't really see you, but you know, you can see me and we can talk online. Uh, thanks again. Talk to you soon.